this one here we've got a, an MOT failure it's a 2003 Nissan Almira it uh, failed on a broken coil spring a couple of bulbs and there's some lights on the dashboard ABS light, engine management light uh, so we'll figure out what that is later so what we're going to do today is the front coil spring so I'm just going to jack it up and have a little look and see what's required to get that changed I've removed the, the road wheel and here we can see a broken spring so I like this setup on here when you've got the two bolts going through the hub yeah, so that just means I need to remove these two bolts and uh, the nuts at the top good thing there's no drop light on this uh, on this strip so that's one less thing to worry about um, so what I need to do is just give this a little clean up um, and then try and get these bolts out so I've cleaned up those threads on the, these bolts here and I've soaked it in WD-40 so I'll leave that for a little minute this ABS sensor I just need to pull it out in that direction and I'll get that away this here it's got a little C-clip on it little, little thing here so I just need to put a screwdriver or something on the end of that give it a couple of taps of the mallet and that should pull the C-clip out and allow me to disconnect this brake hose uh, once I've done that I can get an 18mm socket on there with the breaker bar and try and crack these nuts off and get them moving there's that little C-clip out there we go so don't lose that Now that the C clip's been removed, you sort of push it inwards and then out. So that's that bit dealt with. Next one I want to go for is this ABS sensor. It should just pull out. If I can't pull, I'll just get the screwdriver on it. Slight correction. These are actually 17 mils. They're just a wee bit rusty and swollen. Uh, so you see, I've got one of them off. Uh, I'm setting one underneath it, but what I might need to do. I just removed the caliper just to give me a bit of better access to get the breaker bar on there and get that bottom one off. So basically what I had to do is, because it's probably been on there since day one, it's probably been on there since 2003, uh, would loosen it a little bit, get a couple of threads off it and then back in, loosen it, back in, back in. What you're doing is try to clean up the threads on your way out. So in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out until you get to the very end and that way Hopefully you don't damage the bolt or the nut. These little bolts on the backs, two of them, one top and bottom. Yeah, these appear to be a 12 mil, but I don't know if they were originally supposed to be a 13 and have just been really old and really rounded or something, but 12 mil took them off. So that will allow me to get this caliper out of the way. As you can see with the caliper removed, that gives me enough space to get the socket and a big breaker bar in. As you can see what I've done is I put spanner on the back of here and just resting it on the edge of the disc so that means when I start turning this it won't turn the bolt uh, and it'll work it out that way so that's these nuts and bolts being loosened off uh, the main thing you want to I'm going to leave these in just now because the main thing you want to be careful of if you take these bolts out of the hub if you take the bolts out the hub falls forward so if it falls forward there's a chance that this drive shaft may pop out the gearbox and you end up with a uh, gearbox oil all over the floor uh, you don't want to give yourself that problem so you just need to be very careful that this hub doesn't fall forward uh, when you take the bolts out so i'm just leaving them in just now i'll kind of take them out last so i'm just going to go for these three nuts at the top uh, once i take these three nuts out and the two bolts the whole strut assembly should be able to be removed. So what I've done, so I've removed these two nuts, I've loosened this one off so that it's just on a couple of threads and that way the strut isn't going to fall down to the floor so I have a lot more control over it. I'll leave that one just on a couple of threads then I shall remove these bolts and just make sure that that hub doesn't fall forward if it does I just need to get like a bungee cord or a piece of rope or something just put it round there hook it up so it doesn't fall anywhere 
I've removed those bolts, then you can see it's quite safe, it's quite happy just sitting with us. So I don't have to worry about tying that up. Yeah, so we'll just take a couple of threads off that nut and the whole strut assembly will come away. So these are the tools that you require, these are spring compressors. So even though even though this spring is broken, there'll still be tension on it. So you don't want to remove the top nut or start disassembling this without putting the clamps on and taking the tension off it. Um, so that's very important that you do that. Just take the tension off it before you start taking any of the, the, the top nuts off. So now I've taken the tension by using the spring compre compressors. I can now turn my attention to removing this top nut. It's an 80mm. Uh, I've got a, an impact gun, so I'm just going to use that. Uh, but what you could do is put a swan neck spanner on there and a little. Um, I think it's a 10 mil spanner or something like that to hold that in place while you turn it but I'm just going to use a gun because I've got one available so here it is disassembled we have the top mount which is this bit top mount bearing which on this one I think is this here is turning in there so the top mount bearing with a little rubber bump stop on it we have the spring completely the broken bit and the shock absorber so my next step is to get the new spring Mate it up with this one just to make sure that it's, a, it's the correct part. And then I need to put the spring compressors on it again to compress all that down to enable me to put it back on, on there and get it all back together. So here we have it. The all put back together. The 80mm nut has been put back on the top. So all I do is take these spring compressors off and this is ready to go back in the car. One thing I forgot to mention, when you're putting this thing back together again, you just make sure it's seated on this one here that's just sits underneath the rubber, there's a little sort of channel that it sits in, it's quite easy on that one. But the main thing is you'll always have like a little stop right at there where the end of the spring goes, so you, you can't miss it, so just keep an eye on it, make sure that when you let the, the tension off the spring, that this end of the spring ends up sitting at the little stopper. Another another thing to note when you put it back in is this little arrow here. This points outwards. It points out away from the engine. And you notice another little arrow on the bearing here. So again points outwards. Uh, otherwise these ho these bolts won't line up with the holes in the chassis. So just remember that that little arrow goes outwards away from the car. What I normally do is I put it in place and I just put these on just a couple of threads and um, that just that allows me to move that about. Uh, the last thing I'll do when I'm finishing the job is actually tighten these up. Uh, so I'm just putting this there just to hold the, the strut in place so it doesn't fall down. Um, so they're not actually tightened up or anything just yet. That's these two bolts in and tightened up. So all I need to do is put the ABS sensor clip back in, brake hose clip back in, and just put that caliper back on. Let's see. Just put that caliper back on. Uh, and then what I'll do is put it on the ground. Once it's on the ground, that's when I tighten up these little bolts. And that should be job done. That's everything now back the way I found it, so I'm just going to put the road wheel back on, put it on the ground and tighten up the three top nuts at the top and that's it.